good day and welcome to abb india limited q1 cy 2023 earnings conference call as a reminder participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded and any unauthorized recording of this call is strictly prohibited the recording will be made available on the company's and sebi's website subsequently i now hand the conference over to mr t k shridhar chief financial officer of abb india limited thank you and over to you sir thank you thank you very much a very good morning to all of you so welcome to the q1 2023 result call on this call so <clears throat> along with me i have mr sanjeev sharma the country managing director and then i have uh, mr sanjeev arora representing motion business kiran from electrification um, unfortunately we don't have anyone from process automation because they are busy with the customers and subhrata will who is head of robotics will join us at some time right so with this i hand over to him to take us to the uh, q1 performance thank you sirdar uh, good morning to all of you thanks for joining in uh, this call uh, for our first quarter or in indian terms the last quarter let's call it as a january march quarter <coughs> uh business highlights uh, just to give you certain pointers towards uh, what we saw in the last quarter in results uh, we had a strong start of the year we our orders are up 36% revenues are up 22% uh this is something which we acknowledge as the highest ever order growth in quarter 1 in last 5 years our uh, improvement on ebitda margin uh is to 11.4% which is uh, 290 basis points year on year basis pbt before exception is up uh, 66% year on year and pat is up 65% on like to like basis we are we continue to maintain and expand our cash cash position which stands uh, close to 4000 crores we we had the agm uh, yesterday uh wherein uh, uh, you know all the shareholders uh, who were present and also who joined online they appreciated the first integrated report for 2022 published by us uh it really has brought a uh, lot of new elements which makes it uh, very easy to read uh, for our shareholders apart from financial there are a lot of other qualitative qualitative uh, aspects which have been added and we believe this is a journey which will continue and every year when you have uh, our report integrated report you will see the elements become even better uh, we will highly encourage uh, if you are not done it already that please look at uh, this first integrated report published by us and we'll be very happy to get your feedback as well in terms of uh, what you like and also what we can improve on it on sustainability goals uh, we our green power utilization is 100% and it has progressed uh, well for us as part of our re100 goals co2 emissions were down across locations and just to give you as a, a data point in 2022 our ghg uh, emissions were down 82% and that's the journey we continue to do we have a very structured program and every month and every quarter and every year we continue to make good progress in that direction and we of course continue to have good discipline on waste and water management next now in terms of uh, uh, market momentum how we see it on the right you can see how the orders and revenue development has taken place we continue to see strong growth across most business areas in short cycle business and that shows the width ladies and gentlemen please stay connected we've lost the uh, business across tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 and even tier 4 cities i think that's something which is really is the gain and that's where it contributes to the short cycle business because there's an overall growth in different market segments our services 
for our installed base were up 37 percent uh, on the orders and revenues were up by 33 percent that shows that customers are investing in improving reliability availability maintainability and serviceability of their assets and on the uh, Continued momentum we see in the automotive and electronic side because these are the sectors which are expanding. Automotive on their own and plus the EV segment in automotive is contributing even faster growth. Uh, and also the value chain, uh, you know, whether it's in the batteries or many others, we see a lot of absorption of AVB technology there. And electronics as one segment, I think, is going to expand in an exponential basis as we go forward and a lot of our products and technology find their way there. On the process side, uh, power handling, motors, and drive packages for metal, cement, oil, and gas measures, I think that has been quite robust, and that shows uh, that the demand and the distribution of all these, uh, uh, those, all these uh, uh, you know, uh, output, uh, be it metal, cement, oil, and gas, or the city gas distribution for the citizens of the uh, different, different cities across that expansion contributes directly to our uh, order as well as the revenue uh, pipeline. On the transport side, uh, it's I think known to all of us, railways and metro, uh, they are spending a lot, expanding a lot, modernizing a lot, and our technology fits right at the heart of it. So that's where, again, we get uh, uh, benefit. So with this, the order backlog uh, has grown 37% to uh, Indian rupees 7170 crore, which gives us good revenue uh, visibility, and uh, also we have a good gross margin visibility there. And if we execute it right, uh, we have VC future as a positive uh, development on the revenue side as well as profitability side. Some of the examples, just to uh, just to just to give you a few examples in terms of which are the areas we touch with our technology. Uh, like, for example, our system drives for the metals application, uh, gas applications. Uh, we have, uh, you know, robotics earlier used to be only in the automotive sector, but now it really has gone deep and wide in the manufacturing sector, be it electronics, it is uh, spun dyed uh, specialty fi fiber, paint conglomerate, or even the FMCGs, uh, they, are, they, are, they are using our technology. Uh, we have the uh, metal majors who are buying a lot of power equipment from us, traction technology for Gopal and Indore met metros and Indian railways, and of course the data center, which was a new segment which we nurtured a few years ago, it is really is paying good dividends to us in terms of all large hyperscale data centers. Uh, our position there is pretty strong, and uh, we continue to support uh, our uh, our customers to expand the data center. Uh, in the digital economy today. Uh, robotic solution for EV cars, I think that's a good expanding area. I mentioned gas distribution solution for seven Northeast uh, uh, states. And, uh, and of course, uh, the other four technologies like SCADA automation, which provides more reliability uh, for jetty pipeline. <laughs> So if you really look into the uh, how the how our exposure to multiple market segments, we have 18 business lines, and they are exposed to about 22, 23 market segments, which are relevant for us. We track them, and uh, they, there are the the segments which are going the fastest are in the focus category. The ones which we started few years and now they are creating a good base of business for for us is in the enhanced character threat area. And traditionally, we have been very strong in these so-called sustained market segments, wherein our product offering and our install base is pretty strong. So we continue to keep focus on them. A mix of high growth segments and also the segments which are uh, which are traditionally strong for us and gives us a good good uh, good mix of growth uh, on the both orders revenue, and also gives more diversity as uh, different cycles of different market segments will play out in future. Now, when it comes to a uh, the theme of the quarter, which is electronics, uh, if you look into the deep dive, uh, Indian electronics market is expected to grow at a CAGR of 30% to reach $300 billion by FY26. So this is one area wherein we are quite positive in terms of supporting all the new capacities which are coming in, uh, which could be at a very high-end uh, cell phones, 
uh, to industrial electronics, consumer electronics, electronic components, auto electronics, uh, and government's focus to really create uh, more, uh, you know, kind of uh, independence from the global resources and have these capacities built inside the country. I think this uh, theme seems to be having a good uh, upturn for years to come, and we are happy to participate. The other benefit we will get is when such uh, capacities and the sub-assembly capacities get developed, we will also have a lot of uh, supply chain base that will get created in the country, which will also help us to reduce our imports uh, because some of the electronics is not manufactured in the country, like power electronics uh, and many other aspects of it. If that gets localized, that also helps us to increase our localization, which, uh, which we wish to do in certain product categories we have. On the ESG side, as I mentioned before, uh, at energy level, our green power utilization is 100% compared to 2021 baseline. Waste recyclability stands at 97% compared to 21 baseline. And also water recyclability we have reached at uh, 50%. And uh, we continue to focus in these areas. And every, uh, every quarter when you hear from us, you will see these numbers taking in the right direction. Our CSR focus uh, continues to be in the high impact areas, which is in education, diversity and inclusion, communities and environment. Uh, here we do have very impactful, very uh, well-driven programs, be it in the education wherein we are covering 98 government schools around our plant or educating uh, youth on the IT skills. Uh, we have, we are right now uh, 200, uh, you know, from women who are pursuing STEM courses. They come from the relatively uh, underprivileged background. So we are giving them the active uh, kind of uh, uh, scholarship, but at the same time, we are giving them uh, quite a bit of uh, support in their uh, uh, internship, uh, mentoring, so that they, when they come out of their colleges, they are really ready for the market. And same way in the communities and environment, we are helping a lot of infrastructure, public infrastructure upgrade, where we think uh, it is easier for the women to come to the industrial areas. Uh, there are proper pathways, there are proper roads, and there are proper connectivity uh, between the public transport and the plants they had to walk to, and they are properly lighted so that everybody feels uh, confident coming to the industrial plants. Because that's one thing, in order to increase the diversity, and uh, more women need to come not only to offices, but also to the manufacturing plants, and we need to create it. And we also create them as a sample base for other industries to uh, follow around their plants uh, uh, to improve the infrastructure continuously. With this, I now hand it over to uh, TK Sirizar, our CFO, to uh, talk about financial highlights. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sanjeev. So let's go to the first executive summary. I think the numbers speak for themselves. So the first time I could say that probably that uh, uh, we did definitely have a fantastic quarter. So let's look at uh, how did we perform first versus uh, um, the last Q1 and also then sequentially how did we perform. I think the Q1 from the orders grew by 36 percentage. We had revenues uh, going up by 37 uh, by 22 percentage back loss at uh, an all-time high of 37 percentage growth and uh, profit before tax was 66 percentage higher and also the um, uh, profit after tax like to like on a like to like basis was 65. So I think overall it was another positive quarter and it was growth across all business lines um, like what it was in the previous year as well. And um, we now we see a solid backlog to secure our future revenues. And not to uh, <clears throat> stop it there, we also definitely see the opportunity pipeline, which is robust. And um, uh, just to uh, compare with how did we perform with, uh, sequentially with Q422, I think we maintain the momentum by and large, um, uh, definitely better in orders and also um, in, uh, better in uh, revenues as well. And, and But not uh, in the profitability. The reason is uh, in uh, Q422, we had a favorable forex impact, uh, which really uh, helped us. And uh, that was something which was there. And uh, <clears throat> so, but, uh, but 
and also we, we did uh, take up a provision of 23 crores in this particular quarter for an uh, traction motor uh, <clears throat> issue which we had and that's more uh, definitely a uh, more practical step to make this type of uh, provision uh, to make sure that we have uh, connections with the customers and the contract obligations properly met. So I think uh, so with this, and we definitely ended with a strong tax balance of 3,942 crores, as what you see. So uh, as we acted in the past, we have already earmarked certain cash of this for uh, the expansions of uh, uh, our existing plants. What we have, including the modernization of it, plus also uh, actively looking for the M&A options, what we had already uh, mentioned in the previous calls. <clears throat> so overall, I thought uh, this was an, um, a good, strong. Uh, <clears throat> start for the year. So that, that's how we see it. Um, all the businesses are at this point of time looking forward to engage with the customers to have the growth momentum. The next slide. So just to uh, <coughs> dive a bit more deeper as to what actually made up for the uh, changes what we are seeing at this point of time in the uh, businesses. Right, I think the first thing is that uh, women, our material costs are holding pretty strongly at this point of time at uh, between a band of uh, 63.5 to 64, 64.5 thousand days as what we see. So this is good. I mean, uh, I would say um, with, the com with the commodity prices uh, softening at this point of time and we are able to hold on to the price in the market is something which is definitely uh, <coughs> uh, an item to watch out for going forward. So we will make sure that we are there uh, continuously monitoring this particular item. So next is around um, uh, other income. I think other income definitely has an uh, in the fixed debt because we have a cash of 3,900 crores that earns interest. So that's something which is um, uh, which is really interesting for us to have there uh, to fuel our future uh, growth opportunities as well. So those income is uh, in, uh, to an extent uh, uh, supporting the bottom line as well. Uh, personal expenses compared to uh, Q on Q, which is the last in the previous year, the same quarter and this quarter, uh, we did have a slight increase. Uh, and that's majorly because um, we had to buy the salaries of the people and also the incentives were announced in Q1 based on the performance what they had done for Q2. So there's no other uh, special event uh, for that. Uh, <clears throat> that's something which uh, is uh, Exchange commodity and uh, variation in price was high. We had a favorable impact in um, Q4 2022, but on an, uh, on a like to like basis, we did not have much of an impact other than a uh, nine crore positive impact which we lost. Otherwise, the other topics are pretty much uh, similar. So we don't have any other issues. And uh, with respect to the other expenses, you really see that 402 crores or 613 crores um, <clears throat> is something which uh, would be interesting for you to know more, more as to why it is. And it's, I think I could tell you the majority of it has been on account of volumes which we have grown. So that's basically leading to that, be it freight, be it uh, um, uh, <clears throat> other expenses. Of course, we did have a bit of a more travel expenses to do. Uh, that's uh, showing up as a positive impact in orders and the revenue execution, so that's good. And also, uh, with the service revenues increasing, uh, naturally some of the uh, some of these uh, volume-related expenses will definitely is expected to uh, slightly go up. So, but on a uh, uh, sequential quarter, we are more or less in the same line as what we were previous uh, in December quarter. Over to you, next slide. So now we uh, go do a bit of color by division by I mean business segment by segment. So start with rectification. So rectification uh, is definitely very strong at this point of time. Order growth of 44 percentage, revenue growth of 16 percentage, and uh, order backlog of uh, 37 percentage. So I mean this is something that's very really, uh, nice to have. So they have um, uh, backlog, and this is. Um, happening in all the divisions, be it smart buildings, uh, distribution solutions, as well as uh, uh, smart power. So it is across, well spread out, so that means you could definitely see that um, it, is, um, it is increasing. So now coming to profitability, I think it is a higher contribution from volume growth, which uh, definitely helps the businesses uh, absorb the cost and deliver better profitability. And uh, a price realization was definitely better in this quarter as well. And uh, the capacity utilization in terms of automating um, uh, the plants and making sure that they are more uh, 
productive is actually one of the um, uh, principles which has started to pay out. I think we have heard several times in the past when Sanjeev was mentioning is how modernization does not mean uh, better factories. It also means better production processes which could uh, um, uh, do precise manufacturing and high quality stuff which goes over the factory. So that's now in the terms of uh, giving the benefits back to the organization that then uh, impact what you see. The next slide. So I think the related question because uh, could be that is this margin in uh, electrification sustainable, right? So that could be one of the interesting questions to answer. And I think that uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, we have a backlog which has consistent margin uh, earning capacity, right? But definitely it depends on the mix which we and which industries we cater in the next few quarters, depending upon the backlog which we have and the book to bill situation. So because if you look at um, um, electrification, so they have definitely a high book to bill content. Uh, they definitely depend upon channel partners and uh, uh, distributors to give them the majority of the businesses. So at this point of time, I think uh, on a blended basis, on a four quarterly basis is what we would try to maintain. So that's what we would like to say. On the motion side of it, again, there's again another business segment which is pretty much well holding up and it's a very mature business uh, where we see that the order growth was 37 percentage, revenue order is something which is 36 percentage in line with the order growth which is happening and uh, order backlog quite extensively with 19 percentage. I mean there are no store moving orders, they are pretty much very well solid um, orders which are earmarked for execution in the coming quarters. So uh, the next coming to the PBIT story, so they are definitely tracking well and the Q4 2022 was definitely a uh, uh, very strong quarter for them with the mix which helped them to get that particular uh, good margin and the capacity volumes uh, which drew the volumes at that point of time. <clears throat> so if you look at it, it's clear. I think um, Q2 and Q3 were something which were uh, less in terms of the, uh, uh, the volumes, but there is a strong recovery in Q4 2022, and that's probably um, compensated for the uh, low recoveries in Q2 and Q3. And then again, Q4, uh, the Q123, I think that's basically uh, where they could have performed definitely better. But we took an charge of uh, 23 crores, which we have published in the SEBI as well, um, <clears throat> as in one time uh, warranty cost for interaction motors, uh, which we uh, supplied. And that's more because of the supplier uh, quality, which we detected uh, when we do it. So I think as in the past, whenever we detect an issue and which is going to have an implication with the uh, customer, uh, when there is a phenomenon, there is a root cause analysis which is done and measured in terms of what we would need to uh, set right that particular position and we make that position upfront and then make sure that we monitor and may uh, and uh, address the solution in the right manner. Uh, and at uh, some point of time with the mitigation plans which will be there on those particular provisions what we have done, it's not necessarily that the entire amount may be spent. But we need to allow time uh, for this issue to be uh, resolved right? because they're all on um, moving applications and uh, um, <clears throat> things. So I think uh, if you take some time, we would measure that in the next uh, three to four quarters to come. <clears throat> the next slide. Process automation, I think uh, process automation had uh, very good uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4 quarters as you would see. These are all project orders. Project orders normally have a cycle in which they uh, start to decide. Um, so therefore, uh, I think uh, we do have a strong pipeline which we see that will mature into orders in the next, uh, um, uh, next quarters to come. So therefore, I think um, uh, we are pretty much stable on the com on the orders what we see at this point of time, and also a bit of an uh, um, uh, time play out happens in project orders. The last quarter is definitely weak because it's a financial year of some of the uh, companies, so they would have exhausted their budgets, and they definitely seek new budgets coming the next year, which starts from April to end of April month onward. So uh, we we'll let's see how the decision plays out in the coming quarters. Uh, revenues, I think, built on the backlogs that they had done uh, and uh, <clears throat> they have uh, in their pipeline. So they take the 23 percentage growth on revenues. So that is uh, a good part of it. But I think most of it came from system revenues. Uh, so that's something which uh, um, is dependent on the project execution life cycles. 
So uh, that's how uh, we see the mix a bit changed in this particular period. And that is probably also the reason why uh, we had an, um, a dip in the margins as what you see. But I think on, an, on a blended basis, um, 11 to 12 percent is a 10 to 10 to 11 percent is something what we expect. <laughs> Robotics again. Um, this is also another business which we saw on uh, quite a few, uh, quite a strong uptick in orders, and that's more uh, market driven uh, in terms of um, adapting robotics technologies in the production process of various market segments. 23 market segments is what we track. Um, so the revenue growth was slightly lesser because it's more dependent on the uh, uptake and assembly of the robots and supplies. So I think we we, uh, we want to make sure that this will also be executed in the coming uh, quarters to look at it. And margins definitely had were superior, uh, supported by service and uh, revenues from electronic segment and what we see. So I think this is something as a fact sheet. I would say that um, we still uh, remain a 13 percentage of services, 6 percentage in terms of um, uh, um, project closing, and 80 percentage coming from products. So predominantly, um, uh, <clears throat> our, revenue, our revenues are more predictable now with the export, uh, with the backlog what we have. And um, yeah, I think export markets are slightly muted, not because as a percentage, but as a value, we have definitely grown in terms of uh, quarter to quarter as a growth percentage. But the local and the demand is definitely stronger than the export demand, and that's probably playing out in percentages. Next slide. Yeah. So what's going to be the focus areas of 23? Of course, I think it's um, a penetration to the market, um, aligning with the, the industry trends. That's going to be um, the next one. Um, the continued focus area is what we see. Uh, <clears throat> order backlog conversion. So we did uh, have, we do have a strong order backlog at this point of time. So planned execution is the key. And uh, of course, as, as the expectation is to maintain the margin momentum, as what we said, uh, we want to make sure that um, we hold on to the back percentage of 10 plus as what we see at this point of time for the next few quarters to come. So to that, we have a credible performance on the uh, road. Um, <clears throat> our expansion plans on uh, for uh, factories will definitely be aligned with the uh, purpose with which we are making those investments. And sustainability is uh, going to is a part of our DNA as what we see. So with that, I probably uh, we could probably <coughs> open up for Q and A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Renu Bait from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning team and congratulations uh, for stellar performance uh, for the quarter. Uh, a first question here is, um, if you broadly to look at order flow trajectory across all segments, X of uh, PA has seen a very strong growth. Um, so is it something to also do apart from the broad optimism in the end markets, uh, some slippages of orders coming in from the previous quarter to this quarter, which has helped uh, to accelerate the momentum? And um, given the fact you've mentioned that pipeline for the rest of the year is healthy, uh, should we expect that high double digit 20 to 30 percent growth in order inflows uh, could be uh, seen for uh, the year as a whole based on the pipeline that you suggested? Yeah. So, Renul, so let me answer that, and Sanjeev will definitely add his expert comments later. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, if we go to the, um, uh, I would uh, go on the uh, two things. One, in which market segment we are in. So we are in those three sectors. That, uh, if you look back to the slides of where Sanjeev uh, was mentioning about fast growth, um, moderate growth, and of course the other one where we are. So our major play happens in the moderate growth sectors with cement, steel, and everything else, right? And we are definitely making it up with uh, in a lot of fast growth segments what we are focusing on. So I think 
at the end of the day, I think um, we expect an, uh, uh, growth in the orders on an, um, a four-quarter basis, which is a yearly running basis, of 12 to 15 percentage should be an, uh, um, definitely a uh, place to go. Right? So these 20 percentages or 30 percentages of what we see is something which depends on how the customer <coughs> he wants to um, uh, make his order um, uh, or decision pattern, right? So that's something which is a mix of projects, which is a mix of also uh, certain decisions, what will happen with respect to funding. So that's, that's what we see. But definitely, I think uh, we are um, uh, looking at a positive trajectory on that. Sanjeev, you want to yeah, thank you. Thank you, Siridhar. Thanks, Renu. Uh, from the from the overall construct of the market, uh, I think just to add some granularity, uh, how we see uh, the market and the uh, uh, development. So all the businesses that we have, out of 18 businesses who are exposed to service and who are exposed to the, say, uh, you know, the product business, I think there the growth is quite robust. And that that really represents what's happening in the country across because it is a secular growth not coming from very large industries but it is coming across the uh, city geographical distribution across the market segment and also the category of the customers you have not necessarily all the end users you also have machine builders who may be supplying domestically as well as exporting and also a lot of participation in uh, the infrastructure projects. So our channel partners, our integrators who are involved there. So I would say on the product category side, it is uh, quite strong. Then comes the next level, wherein our product gets used into the subsystem. We call it as an ETO business, engineer to order. There again, it is the power distribution in the cities, renewables, uh, and also in the new segment, and the industries which are expanding or uh, you know, kind of increasing the capacities uh, on an incremental basis on the ground side. So there again, we see it's pretty strong. Now the third category is the system business, which is our project business. Uh, is it disconnected? Okay. No, it's audible. Uh, you are audible. So the project business, uh, that's where what we do is we uh, we are careful in terms of which kind of projects we take, which kind of segments we are focused on. So one is pure on the basis of where our value proposition is strong for the customer and wherein we add a lot of value for the customer because once you add a lot of value for the customer, then it is possible to price that value. And when you price that value, it also shows into your gross margin as well as in your books. Right, so that has been our focus, and project business typically tends to be more cyclic than the ETO and the product business. On the product business, I think most of the categories we have, it is pretty strong. One or two categories are seeing the headwind, and they they were growing quite strongly for last many quarters. But one or two categories have some headwinds. But other than that, um, I think uh, it is uh, it is pretty robust uh, market construct at this point of time in each area, including robotics, uh, electrification, and uh, uh, several categories of motion business. Sure. Uh, thanks. And my um, second question, or the last question here, would be on profitability. Uh, until two quarters back, uh, we were confident of sustaining PBT margins of 10% plus. And now, having seen margins improve sustainably across segments, uh, we are indicating to maintain net margins of 10% plus. So you know uh, this uh, this difference or the margin improvement or trajectory or outlook over the last six months um, is it primarily uh, driven by the mix and uh, the gross uh, margin on account of softening of commodity prices or more to do uh, with the overall improvement in uh, the price realizations across um, end product and solutions and mix here? So how should we look at from a two to three year perspective in terms of margin outlook? So margin gets affected by many variables. And uh, one of the variable is the price relies on the market and whether you have the capacity and capability to transfer the in the inflationary environment uh, past the uh, cost increase to the customer. So I think we succeeded in both. And uh, since our portfolio is positioned onto the high value add as well as high quality, highly reliable products, I think there's a lot of recognition in the market post COVID to buy the products which are the high reliability caution. And also not only reliability in the product quality, but also our ability to deliver them. 
So those two factors have allowed us to pass on inflationary costs to the market uh, to a greater extent, and also realization of the fair price given the demand supply situation we had in the marketplace to maintain the reliability of the product deliveries. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is that uh, now if you talk about future, the future can be described out of the backlog because uh, backlog is what you convert and that backlog, the gross margin position as, is, as, it, is, as it is visible today, if it is run over good uh, capacity utilization, naturally you realize a better uh, profitability out of it unless some kind of an uneven event which is not foreseeable by us today uh, uh, comes in and uh, other than that, you know, then the trajectory remains smooth. So if the, uh, there's a robust order pipeline, robust uh, visibility of the revenues, and the gross margins are, uh, you know, to our satisfaction, and we run the capacities to, to the level we want to do. So I think that trajectory is quite smooth, Renu, at this point of time when we look at it uh, uh, from the near future perspective. Thanks much, Sanjeev, for comments. Um, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much and, and congratulations on great numbers. But just continuing on the same thread, you talked about you know improved price realization. Uh, you know, uh, and so how should one think of it? Are you able to price your products better than what you used to in in a pre-COVID environment, uh, or is this the mix which has changed? So two things have happened. One is the the you know the the market has matured, uh, wherein the uh, buyers uh, have a much higher trust created among certain companies or certain brands who could support them during COVID period. I think that's one something which is visible, which makes us easy to realize uh, you know the orders in the marketplace. So that's number one. Uh, if you talk about post COVID period. Okay. Second part is uh, the the customer base which used to go for, uh, compare high quality products with the cheap quality products to compare prices. I think that behavior has come down in the marketplace. They really uh, try to compare Apple with Apple. So we don't see those kind of uh, negotiation tactics in the marketplace because customers don't want you to wait outside their room and negotiate. They actually are very professional. They connect with you online, they negotiate, and they have a reasonable expectation of price. And if we meet those criteria, I think uh, we, uh, we get that benefit. At the same time, we have been reducing our cost because, because of our localization and expanded volume and our, our connect with our suppliers. Uh, that also contributes to our ability to kind of serve the market at a reasonable price. And at the same time, we are able to build our uh, backlog. Uh, so these are the few factors that count. And then, of course, uh, you know, as I said, the customers are mature and they understand what's happening on the, uh, on the inflation side. And also there was a stress on the supply and demand side. So that also helps us realize the right price point in the marketplace. So that, these are the few factors we observed. Uh, That's very, very helpful and, and extremely good. So uh, how is the uh, you know supply pipeline uh, now panning out? Is there uh, an ease in your supply chain or is that still a stretch? Uh, and will this advantage stay? On a comparative basis, it has eased out. Uh, but on a, but at the same time, we are very cautious. We are still maintaining high inventory levels so that we can deliver to the market what we promise. So it hasn't come down to a level that wherein we can normalize our inventories. Uh, to a very low level and just in time uh, play can be made because there are certain components which uh, uh, or certain category of components wherein which requires a little bit of more handling still because those pressures haven't gone away yet. Understood. That's very, very useful. Uh, secondly, in these orders which you announced, what should we consider as the base orders and what could be large orders in this? All our base orders, nothing is large orders. So if you look into, as Sirizar explained, now 80% of our business is, we can call it as a fast-moving industrial goods. Okay. And uh, and then we have uh, about 13% is coming for services, which is basically, you can say, as a service as delivered and as demanded by the customer. Uh, and then, of course, we have 7-8% which goes in the category of projects. And projects has a long gestation period. So I would say much of uh, uh, much of the market is now for us is 
a very fast conversion of our raw materials into cash category. So I think that that's how what we are seeing in our books. That's very very interesting. Thank you so much. My last question is on the services part. You know, while I think over the last two years we've been talking about you know services becoming a significant part, but from numbers perspective, it is still somewhere between six to eight percent. How should one read that? No, I think uh, it's not six to eight percent. It's like they definitely higher, right? Services, I think uh, maybe you you have taken us uh, taken us back because you can't just dispute because you are an analyst. Uh, but we need to our intention our our expectation is that the the services are much higher in percentage than what you just mentioned. But we'll have to verify and come back to you based on what okay. you are reading. No, no, sorry, my but it is 12 to 13 percent. So that number sustained, right? Yes, yes. That, that, that sounds like it, Puneet, because I don't know. Yes. We didn't know what you read because no, no, sir, I the information to you, right? The 8% is no, no. what we're mentioning is for projects. Yeah. Correct, correct. correct. Yeah, so services are 12 to 13%, but you can see since the uptake of the uh, uh, product business and our ETO business is very strong, uh, so services in net value are expanding by 33%. Yeah. Uh, so that's a quite a good sort of expansion, but on percentage basis, they will stay muted relative to the main business lines because they are expanding faster. Hmm? Understood. That's very very helpful. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure management is able to answer queries from all participants, kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We have a next question from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on a strong quarter, uh, Sanjeev. So my first question is on this uh, incremental demand or the large demand order inflows growth. So can you help us understand this uh, with more granularity on brownfield versus greenfield orders? And also, if you can help us uh, understand how the traction in tier two and tier three cities, but that would also be definitely uh, adding up to this growth. So I think let me bring even more granularity beyond me. So let me involve the president of our divisions for motion and uh, and electrification, which are the largest businesses in us. So Sanjeev Arora is seated here, as well as uh, Kiran Dutt. So Sanjeev, uh, what do you think? What's your view on what you are seeing in the market? Which are the segments which are uh, supporting us in our growth? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. And uh, uh, I, so I, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, now the situation is that uh, if you see, uh, we are, when you talk of say heavy industry, we see a greenfield as well as brownfield expansion. And uh, large players are anyway playing into it. But when you talk of the, say, uh, uh, you know, the, the second line of play, uh, players and the third line of players in those respective uh, se uh, heavy industry segments, they are also expanding. So the, the crux is that in heavy industry, we see both the uh, large projects uh, from uh, the green fields as well as from the brown field. Now, even uh, when we talk of the, say, the discrete part of the light industry, there also we see good amount of expansions. And uh, you know, when we when we when we talk of that, uh, there is a well supported uh, uh, mechanism from the government PLIs as well. So you will see the new investment, and also you will see the brownfield investments. So overall, I would say uh, this is uh, uh, the situation, and uh, and we are confident that. We will see, uh, you know, uh, much more of that in coming times. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, Kiran, uh, how do you see on the electrification yes. side? Uh, added to what Sanjeev Arora has spoken about, uh, what we see from electrification is that a uh, few of the segments, um, uh, since we are talking about tier two and tier three, which uh, uh, which we have, which, which I would also like to talk about, is uh, huge growth in terms of the buildings in tier two and uh, tier uh, three cities. So that is something which is really supporting us, us in terms of growth. Uh, at the same time, when I look at uh, overall as a perspective in terms of electrification, what I see is specifically in terms of infrastructure. I think uh, both in whether it is uh, power infrastructure, uh, maybe it could be renewable, it could be in terms of transports. Um, I think there's a huge growth what we are looking at. 
and that's what is actually supporting us in terms of growth, um, whether it is metro, whether it is tier two, tier three. So uh, all, all said and done, it's, it's also very important to understand where exactly ABB has focused. It's all, ABB is also trying to focus in terms of uh, tier two and tier three cities, more penetration there, and that's also giving a lot of results uh, uh, in terms of growth. Thank you, Kiran. And so the last question is on this uh, entire new energy theme. And uh, so so how do we tend to plug the products gap, if any, there, which we need to address because this is a high growth segment. And we also said that we are looking for the maturation given the strong cash balances which we have. So how do you strategize and think about this high growth segment and how to address the product gap there? Parekshit, can you mention again what segment you're talking about? So the entire energy theme which is changing, the EV side, the um, entire green energy theme, which, which is going to take a big change. The decarbonization, basically, I'm talking about decarbonization. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So the so, product gaps so, there and how do you intend to come? Yeah. Fair enough. So see, if you really look into ABB portfolio and you look into our theme, energy efficiency is core of our theme in terms of what we deliver to our customers. In fact, part of our 2030 GHG reduction target is that we will sell more products. If customers use more of our your products, they will contribute to less uh, GHG emissions. So that plays directly right at the heart of our core portfolio in the motion and electrification and robotics as well as process automation proposition. So that's something anyway is our core. Hmm? But when we see the uh, EV play and the uh, other areas, in India, the opportunity is very ripe uh, for the simple reason, anything that we produce in this country, we use 30% more energy. So that means now the, uh, now the sensi sensitivity of the uh, large customers and medium-sized customers have come in that area. That's why a lot of replacement market has come in, wherein they are using IE3 motors. There is even a demand for even higher uh, efficiency motors because traditionally ABB, you know, India market has been IE2 uh, more motors. New buildings which are coming up, new hotels which are coming up, they are demanding our building management system so that they can reduce the energy uh, footprint of their buildings. So all, about 70% of the buildings which will exist in 2030, they're yet to be constructed. And building management system is one of the core element which uh, allows you to reduce 25 to 35 percent of your energy footprint. So that again is another area where we see there's a good uh, uptake. Electric vehicles, all the new plants, whether it's the scooters or if you look into, uh, into the car manufacturing, very deep uh, use of robotics and automation is in play. And, and also there's a good demand for them to be able to use at the highest productivity level and the lowest energy cost level and minimum usage of the paint. Uh, so that those are the areas wherein the customers are discussing with us. So our whole portfolio is into play there. And as the industry demands more and they are demanding more, I think it is playing out in our order books and revenue books. Hmm. Thank you. I request you to come back in the queue for follow-up questions. We have a next question from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. I just wanted to understand, given that the cash balance is now 4,000 crores and we've indicated, uh, you know, acquisitions, where are we at that stage and how quickly or how soon can we see any action on the ground? So we already have uh, known our intention, uh, made our in intention known to the market that uh, we are uh, going for organic and inorganic expansions. We have a pipeline for the inorganic targets globally, which has local footprints, and also we have uh, a list for the potential local uh, parts. But these things take time, and we have to allow the current owners to uh, come to a point that they are willing to uh, deal with us. And as and when we are ready with that, I think we'll talk to you. Yeah. Sure, sir. Maybe just a follow-up, essentially, on the margin front. I think when we understand the benefits of a higher order backlog as well as in a better capacity utilization, how do we overall see in terms of the competitiveness in terms of maintaining pricing? Do you see competitive intensity increasing given that everyone's out of a or 
or do you see you know supply chain still being sort of an issue in that case that's a good question so we as i said uh, what we have seen is apart from demand supply situation we have seen the migration of a large swath of customers from buying relatively cheap or relatively cheap quality products moving into the high quality product zone which is a sweet spot for us i think that's one good movement we have away from the different demand and supply uh, situation so that's something which we are very encouraged because the customer is willing to pay a premium for a better quality product more energy efficient product and something which they would like to make sure that their machines or their uh, end user plants are effectively uh, working so that that's one movement we see now going forward competitive intensity is different in different product lines so we have 18 product lines and we are exposed to 23 market segment competitive intensity keep changing and varying in different segments based on how the competitors uh, play in how, and how so how they expand their footprint and their capabilities on the ground so i would say that always is now never a one year issue or one quarter issue that's a lifelong issue one has to keep playing out all what we can do is we whatever benefits we are getting today this is something we have been preparing for last 3 4 years and that's what gives us the competitiveness as well as the capability to serve this market in current construct and whatever we have done 2 years ago and now what we are doing it will continue to pay us uh, forward as we go forward yeah maybe just from an overall mix like you indicated tier 3 tier 4 cities are gaining share how much contribution is essentially coming from there and how easy is it for say an individual uh, say sme to kind of choose an abb product versus something that is already locally available there for a long time so tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities this is this is where aspirational india sits at the moment and they and the good thing about aspirational india is they really are having access to any product that they want given the logistic and the distribution system which has been provided by the e-commerce players and we also get the benefit of that bandwidth so we don't see any let up by the tier 2 tier 3 oem manufacturers to choosing uh, sub quality product because these products and these machines which may be being produced in the tier 2 tier 3 cities because the cost of labor and the availability of labor is better uh, but these machines are going to the end users which are the best in class or these are the end users which are uh, you know operating and demanding very high for them so so there is a there is a consumption in the tier 2 tier 3 because the machinery builders oems they are supplying into the large cities they could be supplying into tier 2 or tier 3 uh, tier 1 cities as well but when it comes to the consumption at the uh, in the real estate where in our electrification products and our motion products also go there again we find there is a much higher aspiration to have the high quality and better brand products used in the homes and the offices because the offices which are being built they are also being built to the good standard and the architects and designers who they always make sure that the mix of the products that they use they are more reliable and better quality uh, mix uh, as they design the offices so i think this is a multi faceted change it's not only the choice of the uh, person sitting in tier 2 tier 3 there are multiple forces play into it thank you request you to come back in the queue for follow up questions ladies and gentlemen kindly restrict your questions to one at a time you may join back the queue for follow up questions We have a next question from the line of Jonas Butta from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, one, uh, you know, bookkeeping or an understanding question that I had was from our annual report. Uh, you know, when we see this uh, disclosure on foreign exchange used. Uh, that seems to have gone up materially in calendar year 22 basis the annual report that was just published a couple of days back uh, you know and it's gone back to level where you know power grid was part of our business you know we would understand that there were a lot of imports coming in from the hvdc side so what would have triggered this kind of uh, import because i don't see this commensurate increase in purchases from uh, parent entities which is part of your uh, related party disclosure so if you can just explain what led to this high level of imports which were not from the parent 
<clears throat> very good. I think there was a similar query to um, on a, on the same topic, but I think the um, the expenditure in foreign currency for 2022 was 4,460 crores, with always 3,060 crores which happened in 2021. So it basically has two broad categories of items. One is other. One is the uh, value of imports, what we do. So it has gone up by 1,220 crores from 3,000. It was 3,420 3, crores in 2022, and in 21 it was 2,200 crores. So we definitely had 1,200 crores of imports which happened. So and that's basically triggered by the uh, you know, revenues which you have in the backlog for which we import material, and um, and that also came uh, more from an um, alternate supply vendors which we have created, not much on the uh, um, uh, from the ABB group. This is more from the uh, third party imports what we had. So that I think this is well established that whenever we have an order backlog to execute. And we know where the inventory is to procure from, and keeping in uh, um, keeping the interest of delivery to the customers. We take the right decisions, and they are pretty much very well validated. So then the uh, other thing is basically on the other expenses like the uh, um, the group fees, the traveling for um, uh, service revenues, as well as the market pursuits and the export allocations. What we happen as well as IS costs saw an increase of approximately 10, 11 percentage over the base of 2021 of uh, um, roughly 900 crores. So I think. Overall, this was basically the explanation. I think um, Jonas should help you understand why there is a uh, change in the expenditure in foreign currency. Sure, and just wanted to squeeze in one more on the uh, process automation bit. Uh, you know, while we've seen a sequential decline in order flows, and you've highlighted uh, the pipeline is still strong. If you can, you know, if you can elaborate on the key sectors that are showing strength in PA particularly and. What is the direct indirect exposure to government projects in this segment? That's my final question. Thanks. So, so in fact, we have three types of businesses in PA. One is uh, PA Energy, and then PA Process Industry, and PA Measurement and Analytics. In the PA Energy, we have the exposure to uh, you know the chemicals, petrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, and they are mostly the private industries. But at the same time, we increasingly, what used to be in the government hand, I think that is again like city gas distribution. That's another area which is expanding quite uh, widely. So that's, that's another segment. And of course, the SCADA system for ONGC, public sector units, uh, business with Indian oil, business with Oil India, that, those are kind of the categories that we have. And also we have business with NTPC. So that's, the, that's something what we see in the PA EN book. In PAPI, it's purely a play, or the process industry is purely a play in the uh, mining, uh, cement, aluminium, metals, uh, and large process industries. And then that largely is a play in uh, private sector uh, most, of, most of the time. Uh, but there, there can be one piece, PSU or the other, which also buys our products and services. And as far as the measurement and analytics are concerned, it's a pure products or the engineer to order uh, place. Got it. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Mahesh Bendre from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, in the presentation, we have mentioned that the theme for the quarter is electronics. And uh, the market is expected to grow 30% CAGR over the next three years. So in that, uh, our offering is basically uh, switch gears and automation switches and all that. So is it fair to assume that the uh, uh, the electrical part of our business will grow along with market? If the growth in user, in the, uh, user industry is expected to grow 30%, our uh, business segment should be also grow at least in that rate? Well, I think uh, you have a good question, and it's a good correlation because uh, typically the businesses like motion and electrification, they are directly uh, correlated to how the growth in the economy and the right segments which are going on. But I have Kiran here. Kiran, what would be your qualified view on it? Hmm? Yes, uh, I think this is a very, very good question. In fact, a uh, very exciting question for me as well. Uh, looking at the way electronics has been growing in India and manufacturing of cell phones specifically, I think it's a very important segment for us on uh, the way forward. It could be called as an emerging segment for us uh, in terms of our approach. 
So what we see, as you said, uh, yes, there could be a very good growth, but at the same time, it is also a lot of things are on paper, but it has to materialize over a period of time. So we are looking forward very much in terms of the investments coming from various uh, manufacturers who are ready to, of course, put in money, but uh, there is uh, a subsequent uh, a period which is required for the gestation of the project and, uh, and then pay forward. So we are waiting for it uh, as eagerly as you are. Uh, let's hope for the best uh, going forward how it happens. We are ready with, with all the pro uh, products which are required for this particular segment and the offering uh, is uh, perfect for it and we, we hope uh, to the, do the best uh, in the way, uh, maybe in the quarters to come. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you. Thank you. We request you to come back in the queue for follow-up questions. We have a next question from the line of Aditya Mongia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, my question is um, a pretty uh, straightforward one. What is the capacity utilization uh, across your four segments uh, at this point of time? And if you can kind of split it across your existing plants and the new capacities that you've added, even better. So capacity utilization, we have 20, 27, 25 uh, manufacturing plants. So of course we are using capacities in different uh, ways. So some plants we are still using single shift, but uh, that on that rate the utilization could be as high as 85 90 percent but we still have room to share, increase more shifts certain plants are working with the two shifts and we have a capacity possibility to expand by using the uh, third shift so so that's that's how the scenario is quite distributed uh, and and also you should know that over a period of time we have uh, increased a lot of automation and robotics in our manufacturing and some, some of our plants and they are again increasing the shifts and throughput of those plants is much, much more flexible and easy for us. Got that. Thank you. Thank you. That's the only, only question. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Priyanka Biswas from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking my question. Just one. Uh, so, you, in your chart, you have highlighted as the high growth areas, the focus areas. Uh, so, can you give me some color like what percentage or something like that of your order backlog these focus areas are? And if you can throw some further light, like what is like the market shares you have in these areas? Okay. <clears throat> so, I would have loved to give you this particular answer, right? So, but actually, it endangers my existence in the concrete scenario, right? So, therefore, we don't uh, even, uh, share this sensitive information. Uh, so, if you have any other questions, more than happy to answer that. Uh, so, uh, further is uh, like uh, you, uh, like uh, we have recently seen, like, let's say, commodity prices uh, soften quite a bit. So should we, uh, so is there something like uh, that in the newer orders you may have to pass through some of it and uh, is it happened that way or should we be able to retake the complete pricing hike that we have taken, let's say, over the past uh, couple of quarters? So, see, we, the market pricing, uh, inflation and the supply demand situation, these are the things which take care of the pricing in the market. We are not the ones who decide uh, what price should be kept and uh, that's because there's a fair competition in the market and uh, and that's something which uh, describes what the price point customers are willing to pay. Okay, sir. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. L ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference back to Mr. T.K. Sridhar for closing remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for uh, joining this particular call and interesting questions which was uh, posed to the management um, who are all here and also it was a pleasure answering to those particular questions. But also, we should understand that also appreciate that we also learn in this perspective as to um, and how the businesses is being uh, uh, reviewed by the various stakeholders of the organization because why I say this, Yesterday we um, a day before yesterday we had the board meeting for Q for Q123. Then yesterday we had the AGM where we had the questions from shareholders and the other uh, investors. And today we have uh, the analysts, um, uh, you know, looking into the uh, organization. And thank you for this active participation. Uh, look forward for an, uh, the next call in the after the next quarter. Thank you very much, and to the management team which could make it happen. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ABB India Limited, that concludes today's call. 
thank you for all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.